guys, welcome back to the second part of this video series. So what actually is my edge, right? That's the biggest thing you're like, okay, little example earlier, the previous video, go and check it out. If you if you just come to here without seeing the first one, I was talking about a specific strategy, but broadly speaking, what is my edge? And this is the thing that you've got to define as well for yourself. So my edge, and I put on this slide is, and I knew this was exactly my edge as soon as you kind of think about what it is straight away it should come to you. It's either for me as a day trader, as a more of an aggressive day trader, and it'll be different for you if you're a swing trader or if you're day trading on a slightly longer time frame. It's when institutions, institutional money is flowing into or out of the market. For me, that is when I was really at my best. You know, when there was big money flowing, when there were big shifts in trend and sentiment, money was coming out of the oil market, money was coming out of the indexes, money was coming into tech, whatever it may be, big money, big flow, that was where my edge is. Now, the second part of when my big edge was is when retail traders are trading emotionally. You know, so if that big shift in money flow isn't happening, the good opportunities for me were always when retail traders were trading motion. In other words, they've been trapped by big trend moves that reversed on them. So you've had a big Monday trend move on news of the weekend and the rest of the week had just been a complete obliteration of that trend and taking out lows. That offered a very good opportunity for me. Or when we had volatility on, on let's say the DAX and it was going through lows very, very aggressively. A lot of people were getting stopped out. It was very volatile, liquidity was low. That offered a great opportunity for me. It's gonna be different for you, depending on your conditions. If you're a swing trader, you may wanna say, hey, my edge comes in when money flows in after earnings or money flows out of a stock after earnings or when you know, I'm shorting smaller cap stuff when euphoria is dying out, whatever that may be but it's still understanding the concepts of really very simply and broadly. And I did talk about a specific strategy earlier, but being broad about it and saying, listen, where is your edge? If you could pause the video now and say to yourself, okay, um, where do I trade the best? Just stop it, say to yourself, where's my edge? How do I trade the best? When do I always prefer to be involved in the market? Now that may be something like, hey, when we're in a range bound environment, things are very, very quiet. Um, and we're waiting news the next day or whatever specific thing that is. That's fine, that's your strategy. Maybe you're trading mean reversion during that period. Maybe you're no good at trading volatility. It doesn't matter. In a day guys, it doesn't matter how you're making money out of the market. As long as you're doing it and keeping it and growing it and, and being a consistency in trader, or well, the consistency meaning that you're making more than you're giving back over the period of time. It doesn't have to be the day, the week, the month, but over the whole period of time, you're making money, you're keeping it, you're keeping it, giving a bit of it back, of course, making a bit more, that's consistency. All right, so let's have a look. So why do I wait for these conditions? So let's put this on the board here. Why? Do I wait until I have an edge? Yeah, why do I need to wait? What's the point? Yeah, why don't I just trade? If I can trade, if I'm a good trader, uh, why, do, why can't I just make money all the time? Well, do you know what? I don't know any trader who can just make money like that, add everything and treat the market like a cash machine. The good traders that I know, the ones that I look up to and aspire to, the guys who are doing eight figures a year, the guys who are really killing it, know exactly what they are good at and what they're bad at. And that becomes down to self-awareness as a trader. And we talk a little bit about this in previous videos. And by the way, good opportunity to say, if you like this kind of thing, hit like, and also subscribe so that you can see more of this of this kind of topics and also go back and check out some of the previous videos where we talk specifically about how you become the type of trader that suits you as a person. But the guys who are really, really doing well as traders are the ones who know when to push the throttle, when to back off the throttle. You know, they may even go a period of a year where they're saying, hey, you know what, the conditions are just not right for me. You know, I'm not interested in trading now because my edge, is trading when these specific conditions are on and we don't have them. If you think of some of the famous, um, you know, bear market traders, they really do not do very well in bull markets for obvious reasons. They're shorting, they're very specific, aggressively shorting things. There's no reason for them to be involved when 
there is a bull market. So they step back and rather than undoing all that hard work, you know, it's, they're just patient enough to wait. So this is exactly what I put here because I wait for these conditions because I think that the market and people are more predictable under certain conditions. So when there's a crowd. So, you know, for me as a day trader, I'm trading people's um, expected reaction to price, okay? That's ultimately what I'm doing. I'm trying to find the opportunity where I can be ahead of the crowd and buy knowing that the likely next move from the crowd is to also buy, causing the price to rise, allowing me to take my profits or vice versa. I wanna be able to get in while the market's panicking, assuming that the panic is gonna continue on the short side, but this is obviously, and then I'm gonna take the trade out when I perceive the panic has subsided a little bit. And that is exactly what I'm, uh, uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So, you know, it's very important to think when you're placing the trade is, is what reason do traders have to buy after I've bought because or sell after I've sold? Because if you can't answer that, then you really don't have a business of trading. And this is why it comes down to this was my edge of institutional flow. The reason I think the market's gonna go up after I've gone here is because I believe I've got a condition at the moment where that's a week, a year, that there's money flowing in or out of one thing into another. There's a big cycle underway. Uh, we're coming off highs, we're coming off lows, however it may be, and I'm involved in that money flow. Or flip it on its side and think from a retail perspective, this is guys who are trapped, they're panicking, and I can take advantage of the fact that I know they've got an urgency and they're not really price sensitive, they're gonna come out. So that's what I'm, why I'm waiting for my edge, because I know I think I've got a high probability of making money during those conditions. I'm not gonna lose as much money if I'm wrong, and so ultimately that's gonna push me towards my trading goal. Okay, next video coming up guys.